Hey everyone, this is OC from Cast and Destroy Angling, and welcome back. I figured I'd make a more of an informative type of video this time. Well, this video is dedicated to people that want to get back into fishing, that have you know been kind of out of it for a while. Maybe somebody new, maybe somebody just curious into you know what fishing inshore San Diego, like saltwater, and. Southern California mainly. Before we begin, let me uh, thank everybody that's uh, stuck around and supported me. Thank you so much guys, I really appreciate it. You are in San Diego. You want to fish, you have no idea where to start. You have some fishing knowledge maybe, you went with a buddy or two, tossed bait out in the lake or whatever, maybe caught a catfish or something. Well, that's good, you at least have a feel for it. Or if you don't, it's fine this will help you out. <clears throat> so, what you need to know, the diverse amount of species that live in saltwater and near, near shore here off the coast of uh, California and Southern California mainly, it's insane. Here's some of the common fish species that you can catch or see. It's common and semi-common. Um, starting off with bass. Yes, we have sea bass. Actual sea bass. Um, they don't get huge. Well, the ones that you can keep don't get huge. There's the black sea bass, which that's federally protected in California water. So if you do catch one of these, this is what it looks like right here. And this is it in juvenile form. So if you do catch one of these, just don't even bring it up. If you can, if you can cut the hook, if you can get the hook out while it's in the water, do it. If not, just cut the hook and let it swim away and help it swim federally protected fish. Aside from that one, we do have three different uh, species of uh, sea bass. The spotted sand bass or bay bass, that's what it's commonly known. The barred sand bass and the almighty favorite, well second favorite, depends. Some people love the spotty more, some people love the calico bass more. Um, that's the nickname actually. It's a kelp bass, technically they live in kelp, but Really, they should be called stuff bass. They live anywhere that they're, they're stuff. These three bass, sporty, fun, um, almost everywhere. Inshore, in the bays, estuaries, kelp, anywhere there's kelp you can catch. It, offshore even. Um, as deep as 150 feet, you can catch sand bass. The barred sand bass, pretty big size ones, about 20 plus inches, they get big. Croakers or in other parts of the world they're called drum those type of fish we have spot fin yellow fin croaker um, you can catch a white croaker but I don't know how common they are now they're more of a colder water species water has heated up here so Corvina um, Corbina with a B not a V and the white sea bass um, it's not a bass it's a it's a drum but it's the biggest member we have here. They can get up to 80 pounds or so. Um, very fun to catch. They are more of kind of an offshore species, but they come in shore and in the bays and stuff, especially the juveniles, that's where they hang out. Aside from those fish, uh, you can also catch mackerel. There are literally tons of mackerel offshore, inshore, near shore, shore, shore. These things are everywhere. Now mackerel, if you didn't know, are in the tuna family. Now, these, there's tons of different types of mackerel all over the world, but our, what we specifically have are Pacific chub mackerel. Uh, they make great bait. We'll get to that later on. Um, so there's mackerel, you can catch those. There's also, um, every once in a while we'll get what's called a jack mackerel. It's not really a mackerel, it's actually a member in the jack family. Jacks, like amber jacks and stuff, they get pretty decent size too, around 30 inches. Mostly you'll see them, in inshore, you'll see them around like 10 to 12 inches. Again, great bait, not so good to eat. So aside from the mackerels, you can also have a chance of catching in uh, when the water warms up a bit, or if you're fishing in the bays, the water stays warm year round, really, or relatively warm for California water. Uh, you can catch barracuda, Pacific barracuda. They aren't like the East Coast Barracuda, meaning they don't get six feet long, but uh, the ones that we have here, they get pretty decent sized, uh, max of I think around four feet. Uh, common size is between two to three feet. Um, 
pretty cool fish, pretty aggressive fish, pretty hard fighting fish, um, and they taste pretty decent too. Now, so this one on the subject of topwater fish, Pacific Bonito, not Bonita, Bonito, right here. Uh, this is a true Bonito, and it's in the tuna family. On warmer years, we'll get them swimming in as close as like 10 feet away from shore, just splashing and smashing bait. Uh, now when they're in, everybody's flocking and everybody's trying to catch them. They're really good fish, they're really hard fighting fish, and technically you're catching tuna in shore, you know? I mean, they don't get huge, but they average between like, uh, the smallest they can get around maybe 14, 13 inches, and as big as five pounds swimming around in the base, so. Pretty cool fish. There's also a bottom fish. There's the uh, California's uh, scorpion fish, or com more commonly known as a sculpin. It's not really a sculpin, it's a scorpion fish, which means it's venomous. Well, the spines are venomous. Um, this is what it looks like. Ta -da. Uh, careful with the spines. I mean, they are really venomous. The spines don't touch them. The meat's perfectly safe to eat. It's, it's delicious, it's white, it's flaky, it's mild. Fish tacos all around. However, do be careful, and I'm not gonna stress this enough. Please be careful when you do catch one of them, especially smaller ones. Uh, they're harder to get off the hook, but be careful. One prick, if you're not allergic, will have your hand swollen up. Two or more might send you to the hospital. If you're allergic, that's a whole different story. So, please be careful. Another bottom fish that people don't really know about or know about but not really it, it's a diamond turbot turbot turbo i don't know how to, i always say turbot it's in the flounder family don't get big but they're about that big and they're found in shallow water estuaries rivers like saltwater rivers uh, bays anything that's flat and sandy though you'll find them all over now, on the subject of flatfish and the bottom fish, there is the most sought after one, which is the California halibut. Those guys get about 80, 90 pounds. Nowhere near the ones the size of the Alaskan ones, but, you know, we'll take what we can get, depending on where you fish. In the bays, they average like between 15 to 30 inches. So it's varied. When you're offshore, like on a boat, they can get huge. This is not about that, this is about inshore. So yeah, you can get lucky and get a few legal halibut in the bays and shallow waters. We also have sharks, rays, several types of sharks actually. Uh, most common ones are the sand sharks and the leopard sharks. Occasionally we'll get, and it's so stupid saying it, but occasionally we'll get juvenile, great white sharks swimming in the bays. Um, look it up, Mission Bay. Great white shark. Just type that in Google. You'll get those swimming through. Um, there's also tons and tons of perch all over, all over the shore, near shore, near the rocks, near eel grass. Um, several species of perch. There are surf perch that are near the surf zone and the breakers where the waves break and everything. You can catch those. A really good fun fight. Now that we've gotten the species out of the way, we'll tune in next episode and find out what type of gear you're gonna need. Thank you for watching. Join me next time. I am forever grateful for all my supporters. Thank you so much. This is OC from Cast and Destroy Angling.